Pablo Picasso has mentioned that every child is an artist. But the problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. Hello everyone, I am Virendra Nirbalkar. Even I believe every child is born an orator, speaker, philosopher, doctor, engineer, painter and what not. But the problem remains how to remain so. And the question can be answered through one statement, memories and perceptions that we hold. So before I move ahead, I will make you nostalgic. Remember the childhood days when you used to play with the water on the wall? The moment the first drop drops off, created one pathway. And that pathway was followed by the next upcoming drops of water until we cut it off and create a newer pathway for the same. Now the next drop of water that flowed through created the newer pathway and followed the same. And out of curiosity, we do it again, right? So we did the same thing again for the third time, wanted to check if that newer pathway can be created and can be followed. So we cut it off and create the third one, which was followed. Now this whole thing can be replaced with the brain or the memories that we hold. Now if I think, of, if I replace the wall with the brain we have and the water flowed, those get replaced with the memories that we make. Then the tiny little granules on the wall, they become the neurons in our brain. Now, what is neuron? Neuron consider that they are tiny little wire which are there in our brain, which is around 86 to 90 billion neurons in everyone's mind. They connect together to make the memories. They have got some body and terminals which then connect to the other neurons. And how they are placed in the brain system is this how. We get the inputs from the environment. We listen, we hear, we you know, see something, we touch something, we taste something, smell something. Those get into the registry, sensory registry. And that goes to the short term memory and lives there for a couple of seconds to a couple of hours. And if the input is strong enough, it goes to the long-term memory. And the connection between the short-term memory and the long-term memory is made through the neurons that we have. So if I can conclude something out of it, I really feel that memories make us who we are. And if I relate it with my life, my story that is quite interesting to, you know, I feel so and I would like, I would like to share with you all, that begins in the remote area of Jagdalpur, Bastar district in Chhattisgarh, the center part of India, where I was living as a child, thinking that I'm a shy, coy, timid person. This is why at least my near and dear ones told me. Until seventh grade, when my one of my teachers, she took me to a radio station because I could speak Hindi well, thanks to my parents. She took me to radio station and broadcast, helped me broadcast one program, which I heard in the radio for the first time. I thought, wow, I'm a great speaker. You know, that changed my memory. That made me feel happy. And when you, this is a magic, you know, when you think that you are great at something, people around you also start feeling so, right? So that had started happening. I was enjoying the process. I was finding the opportunities to speak up more so that people could appreciate. And when you get appreciated, you get dopamine. Now, what is dopamine? Dopamine was, is one neurotransmitter that helps connect two neurons together. That is also called as feel happy chemical. Feel happy hormone. Actually, it makes you feel happy when you achieve, when you get the sense of achievement. And that was happening with me. I was really enjoying the process until ninth grade. When I passed my ninth grade, I was in Hindi medium school. My mother tongue was Hindi. And I was studying in a government Hindi medium school where I wanted to learn English and speak English like Hindi, you know. So I went to one of the convent schools where I had to go through an entrance test and an interview. 
In the entrance test, I did not understand anything because it was all in English. And the interviewer then asked me a couple of questions that I did not understand. So I answered something that he did not understand. <laughs> Tit for tat. Everyone was laughing. The teacher was laughing. The students back in you know, 70 other students who were there, they were laughing. And I was sad. I mean, it makes me laugh, you know, because the sentiments, teenager sentiments, you know, teenagers can't handle the sentiments sometimes. It happens with most of us, right? That made me feel that I am worthless. And it made, it created the sad memories for me. Now, whenever I thought of myself being a great speaker, my memories took me to the bad ones and made me feel worthless. And that's when your friends come into picture. They are the saviors, aren't they? Yeah, one of my friends, friends suggested one antidepressant, thinking that I'm going to be into depression. He suggested me, <laughs> he suggested me this uh, tiny little guy. Yeah, <laughs> it is beady cigarette. This was the easiest thing I could get because my grandfather used to smoke. He used to smoke and leave this left over there and he used to get the opportunity. You know. Yeah, it happened. And indeed, it works out. It actually gives you the false sense of achievement. It gives you the surge of euphoria. And that happens with uh, even food. So how many of us feel like eating food we are when we are stressed? Some of us, yeah, I can see many hands raised. Yeah, how many of you feel like uh, drinking coffee or tea, any nicotine, when we are stressed? Alcohol? No, you can. <laughs> All right, it even happens with the video games. Trust me. For prolonged period of playing video game can create the same dopamine, which generally is obtained by the real sense of achievement. Now, in one of the studies conducted by MJ Cobb and a couple of other intellectuals, they found out that playing video game releases the dopamine, which is almost equal to the injection, which is, which is used for attention deficit and uh, hyperactive children's treatment. And if dose goes higher, it can be even equal to one, one of the drugs that I can't even name in this prestigious platform. So if your child is getting addicted to something, be vigilant because my father was, and I'll take you to my story again. My father was there smart enough. He's really smart enough. He caught me red-handed smoking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then he, instead of shouting out loud, he made me understand that this is not a good thing. He gave me the alternate solution. He made me realize that I am good at painting, so let's do it. I uh, was interested in playing badminton. He made me play badminton as well. And I did continue. I continued, and this is the closest that I could get a few years back. I created this painting. Yeah, yeah. thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you for that. But I couldn't become Pablo Picasso, I understand. You know, but at least I was saved from becoming Pablo Escobar. <laughs> yeah, I quit smoking. I never, ever smoked thereafter. And how about English then? I still found out the ways to become perfect in this English language. And on the process, when you start a process, you meet across the people who can help you out. One of my mentors, he helped me understand the importance of communication skills. He made me, he gave me the platform where I could make the good memories. And that's how a person from a remote area of Chhattisgarh went to United States of America, worked across seven different countries, and won different awards and accolades in different platforms, speaking, speaking platforms. That was only possible because I could replace, I chose to replace my bad memories with the good ones. And it happened with most of us, right? Now, today's message to everyone sitting here, especially those HR and managers out here, if your employees are talking about mental health, give them good memories, give them the environment where appreciation is there, where motivation is there, so that they can replace the bad memories with a good one and become great performers. Teachers out there, can we give 
constructive feedback to the students so that they can improve themselves. All the parents out here, can we find out if your child is getting addic addicted to something? Can we give them alternate solutions, alternate ways to improve and get the dopamine that makes them feel happy? And that's why feeling happy or replacing the memories became my mission. And I, am, I have founded one institute, We Speak, where we are helping the people out replace their bad memories with a good one. Because memories can make you or break you. I would like to thank everyone here sitting here who listened to me carefully. I would like to thank TEDx Susan Street, which gave me platform to share my stories. We learn from stories of others. As Eleanor Roosevelt has correctly mentioned, that learn from the mistakes of others. You can't live long enough to make it all yourself. Thank you.